All eyes on Alibaba today as the new IPO hit its second day. Shares dropped over 4% after surging nearly 40% on its Friday debut. Does this stock have room to run, to grow? Should you invest? What should you do? We're covering your assets tonight with Anthony Saccaro, president of Providence Financial, Alan Haft, financial advisor and author of You Can Never Be Too Rich, and Frank Congemi, president and CEO of Benefactor Financial. Alan, I'll start with you. What should you do at this point is, you know, we get the pop, and uh, so they got a pretty major pop, but typically an IPO sees a 14% a jump. Uh, is it sustainable, and should you buy now? Alan. You know, Jerry, for the slice of somebody's portfolio where they're willing to take some risks, I would go all, all in on this. Look, I mean, all if in? you look at the. What? Uh, I, I look, the company, we're looking at a company, we're getting on the ground floor of a company that has 80% market share in a country of 1.5 billion people, half of which, not even half of which, are even on the internet yet. So there's so much growth opportunity with this company. Now, I do have some trepidation. I, I do have some concern with All right, all right. It, let's, let's, let's go around the horn here and see what everybody has to say first. Frank, what do you say? Do you like this stock here? Well, I think it's great if you're holding it in a portfolio with a, a lot of other stocks, but to go all in with such a large percentage for an average investor, I wouldn't recommend that. And Anthony, what do you say? Do you like this stock here? Yeah, I, I agree. I would not go all in. Uh, you know, part of your portfolio might be okay, but I, I think there's a bigger picture. Right now we have IPO mania that's going on, and I think yeah. Alibaba's time, uh, timing was wonderful, but I don't think the timing is great for the investor. So, no, small investors should be careful and tread with caution. All right, Alan, Jerry, you're, I... you're a, let me ask you a question about <laughs> this, okay? Uh, you're, you're a fan. You like Alibaba. Uh, but what do you own at the end of the day? This is one of my big fears. You don't have actual, as I understand it, you're buying a company in Bermuda, basically. I don't understand what I, what I actually get if I buy the shares. Right, it's the Cayman Islands. I just want to just backtrack for one second. I didn't say go all in with your whole portfolio. I said for the small slice of somebody's pie that they have some risk money, that, it's is a that company that I would strongly look okay. at. Yes. Okay. So we're but, qualifying but it's that. Called, it, it, it's called a variable interest entity, and it's in the Cayman Islands. So basically what you're buying what is a holding mean? company. You're, you're basically buying a holding company that has a contract with the assets in China. It's been done many times before. Um, look, at the, look, at, look at Baidu. Baidu came, went public a handful of years ago. It's done extraordinarily well over the last five years on the stock market. I do have some concerns about the stock, though, because the Chinese can regulate it. Jack Ma doesn't have a great history of, um, of being, the most, being the most judicious with his investors. He yanked Alipay out of, um, out of the assets and kind of uh, left Yahoo holding the bag. Um, so there is, buying... let's get everybody in here. Uh, uh, Frank, to you, uh, interesting corporate structure, uh, and uh, very intelligently, Alan mentions Baidu, but you didn't have to buy that at the open. You didn't have to buy it the first week because it actually languished and then took off later. Would that be a decent strategy here, Frank? Just see how it performs and figure out if you want it later. Well, I think, you know, the stock has room to run, you know, like a lot of things. Facebook came out and uh, didn't do well. Today, uh, Alibaba dropped 4%. Uh, pick your reason why. But I think as part of larger holdings, um, you know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not going to get excited about it. You know, it's just one of many things that you can buy right now. Anthony, what, what, what do you say here? Because I do think there's the issue of do you buy it now? And then do you buy it down the road? And as you know, I mean, for a lot of individual investors, the IPO market is full of problems because typically what happens is the small investor tries to get in at the open. They end up buying at the high uh, and they get stung because all the insiders get out. And in, in particular with this issue, apparently insiders can walk away right away. There's no holding period. So what do you say about t trying to time this stock? Yeah, absolutely. I would not be a timer of the stock. I mean, I think what we're doing is we're looking at a small piece of the puzzle when, when there's really a big puzzle to look at. I think the bigger piece of the puzzle is the history of IPOs in general. And if we believe that history repeats itself, as I, I know most people do, when you look back at the IPOs in general, the, the IPOs tend to ramp up before we have a severe market crash. And, and then, of course, the IPOs crash as well. In 2000, there were, I think there were almost 400 IPOs. And then, of course, in two 2001, the market crash, mm. and there were only 80 IPOs that occurred that year. And, and in 2007, there were 160 IPOs, and, and then in, in 2008, the market crashed 55 percent, and there were only 20 IPOs that year. And I think we're just Boom focusing on one IPO. It's, but it's you know what? There's a dozen. 
Go ahead. There's a dozen more IPOs that are occurring this week, and I bet most listeners don't even know what they are. Well, I, this one has really gotten a lot of attention. Alan Haft, I'll let you have last word here. You know, just um, yeah, it's just a be monstrous. Careful. Oh, sorry. Hey, hey, let me have the last word here. <laughs> um, I, 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 I like the company. Look, if, if, if somebody's looking for a short-term investment, I wouldn't buy it. It has to be for the longer haul. But for the longer haul, you're getting in on the ground floor of a company that has such a huge market potential in their country right now that I wouldn't be shy about putting money into this company by any means. Anthony, Allen, and Frank, thanks for coming on tonight. Great job. Thanks for having me.